Steve! 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 Someone is wrong! On the internet! There's been a great disturbance. We've learned that one of you needs to prove someone wrong. On Reddit. Adventurer, here, take these gigantic charts. But remember, with great power comes great responsatrilatrance. 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 Back to you, Steve. Back to you, Steve. We're introducing a new series called GN Mega Charts that I am beyond excited to announce because we're publishing all of our directly comparable data in full format, easy to find, one URL for each component category. And this is an amalgamation of literally tens of thousands of test passes in just the last year or two alone. It's not even counting. I mean, we have power data in these mega charts going back like almost a decade for like CPU release dates. So all of this will go in just a handful of charts that get perpetually updated. And we're doing this because YouTube has a problem. It's got a few problems actually. We're gonna ignore the one where we've noticed that on every financial channel, there's a very carefully crafted bot conversations about don't engage with them. That's a different topic. The problem for this one is more specifically that is really hard to search for stuff if you're trying to figure out just a single benchmark result. Because it's like you, you go look at the latest CPU or GPU review, that's typically how we say to go find the latest data. But then if the thing you want isn't in there, you have to keep crawling even further back till you can eventually find it. Then you have to figure out what's comparable. Now it works, but we're trying to put together a better way here to fulfill that community request. Even written reviews have this limitation of just sort of chart length and what's contained in any given review, mostly for focus reasons. This has been one of the biggest community requests for the last four years of just, hey, get all the stuff you publish and put it in a spot where I know it's got all the things I want on it. We have to truncate charts for videos because 16 by nine. I mean, we, we don't have to. We could publish them like this, and then in order to watch the video, probably you'd have to click, yes, I do have a 72 inch TV, and yes, it is oriented vertically. And all that required the website to be rebuilt, which we finally done. That was a massive backburnered project for like four years or something. Wendell helped us with that recently. And uh, now we're just kind of knocking out another one of those big community requests. And we have the other ones lined up for after this too. So we're super excited about this. The mega charts page will exist at permanent URLs that don't change. So you can always visit those pages to get the full data set for each component category we review. So we're gonna walk you through the ones we've published so far and give you the vision for what's coming up next for this. It's a really fun project, super cool the stuff we can do with all this data because it's also forcing me to look at what we've collected over the years and evaluate it from a standpoint of like, wait a minute, there's, there's more we can do here than just here's a chart in a review and then you know move on. We can start drawing some pretty interesting parallels. So let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Thermaltake Swappable Blade Fans, available in 120 and 140 millimeter sizes. The new Thermaltake fans include three sets of swappable blades, so that even as you change builds or cases, you can ensure the LEDs are always presented on their best side. The swappable blades allow builders to get the fan frame out of the way of the lights by reversing the blade direction to reconfigure the fan as push or pull while keeping the struts relatively hidden and keeping the fan frame oriented one way. Swapping blades is done by applying pressure evenly to opposite sides, then pressing until the click. Each fan also has pin to pad connections for cableless daisy chaining, and you can learn more at the link in the description below. Okay, this is so cool. So here's what we've got so far. First off, we introduced the mega charts page for CPU power consumption, which includes all of these charts for, again, over a decade of CPUs by release date that we've tested for power consumption, plus our latest efficiency chart and some notes on the methodology. We also just made this mega charts page for the CPU cooler reviews, which compiles all of our validated cooler tests from the last several years on the same comparable platform. We're talking back to 2019 here. 
The CPU power consumption test page also features huge tables of CPUs by name, so you can easily control F the CPU name and know if it's in one of these charts. It's also, frankly, one of the ways we fund this, other than by direct audience support through the store, through Patreon, through donations, because it's got the affiliate links to where you can buy them if you want to buy one. And that's because this website remains entirely ad-free. It's because we don't want the site to look like this when you load it. We'd, we'd prefer you to actually be able to see the content. Now, this table also lets you find our original review or other coverage all in one quick launch place. All the video reviews are linked here. Where we have articles, we're linking those as well. So if you can't find a particular chart you wanted, you can probably find it at least through the reviews. The goal is to just improve navigation. As for the Cooler Benchmark page, this one is even cooler because it marks the introduction of our new Table of Contents feature that Wendell just built. This was another community request. It works great on desktops, even better on mobile. Thank you, Wendell and Krista from the Level 1 Text team for doing this. And you got a progress bar on the top of the page as well that matches our charts progress bar. So some cool theming there. And there's a quick nav drop down that follows you if you want to jump somewhere else on the page. Because again, all these are single page format. So they're huge, easy to navigate now that we have a table of content. Additionally, as part of the sort of transparency here and helping everyone understand what's there, all of these mega charts pages also feature update logs. So you can see when it was last maintained and updated. As for the vision for where this is going. Uh, we plan to update these a couple times a year, so they won't always have the absolute newest data, as in if a CPU review is published today, we're not going to go update the mega charts immediately. There'll be a bit of a latency there. That mostly comes down to sort of an update cadence, saying what is something we can realistically maintain with such a small team. So we're going to update them a few times a year. Uh, they will have the most data, though. So every time you go to these mega charts pages, and as we add more and more of them, they're going to have either the largest charts or it's just going to be split into lots of mini charts based on whatever makes the most sense for comparison. And that's just to make it uh, easy for you to reference everything and find stuff and make recommendations or choices. Or the most important thing, correct people on Reddit. There's, there's again, there's great responsibility here. It's like, imagine you're a Spider-Man, except it's like you got bitten by a calculator instead of a spider. And, now you have chart powers. Now back to the vision thing, my current personal project for the next sort of massive page we're going to build and video we're going to make uh, related to all this is going to be on acoustics. For coolers specifically, we are currently burning through coolers really fast in the acoustic chamber and collecting noise data on them. So the way this works is uh, I went in and set up the test methodology, uh, specific settings we might want to use, the software, all that stuff, wrote the SOP, handed it to Mike on our team, and Mike has been just running cooler after cooler in there. And we've got, I don't know, probably like a dozen or more right now where we have noise data as in samples. So we can give you waves and MP3s and stuff. And we also have the frequency spectrum charts that we're working on. And we have the noise level itself in terms of DBA SPL. And so for the site, uh, and this will come as a video first, but for the site, what I'd like to do longer term is uh, basically have a mega charts page where it's got all the coolers listed in a table and then it's got the sound bite next to it. So if you want to hear the type of noise in the chamber to see if that bothers you rather than just relying on subjective discussion, then it'll be simple. It'll be right there. And of course, we'll play these in the videos going forward as well as we have been with like the Assassin 4, for example. And then hopefully, and this will require a little bit of custom code from Wendell and his team, uh, we'll be able to have some kind of like you click on it and expands down and shows the frequency spectrum plot or something as well. So that's kind of the dream for the acoustic side. We're going to keep trying to figure out cool ways to present all the data we have on the site also and again in video. But all this takes some time to build and code, to parse the data, put it all together. That's the next big thing though for us. And it also land here uh, in terms of updates and showing the chamber and the processes. So you'll see all that over the next few weeks as well. Now, in addition to all this, we are planning to add the CPU and GPU gaming benchmarks to mega charts pages as well. So it'll be just like the coolers and the power consumption stuff, except for our latest round of information on games. Now we do sort of prune those more frequently than most. And that's because as games update, uh, we have to drop parts that haven't been retested. So part of this whole mega charts thing is we are still pruning and filtering. So they're not completely unfiltered. They contain more data uh, in terms of you know, we cut stuff to make it fit in a 16 by 9 in a video. So it'll contain more for that. But we will still be filtering and getting rid of or pruning data that has aged out of what we think is directly comparable. 
great example of that is we're going to have to rerun all the Starfield stuff soon because they just had a massive patch. And so as long as we're presenting everything from the same patch, it'll be there. But when we update, those charts become maybe 10 parts long instead of 40. And that's because we can't have old data with new data uh, when there's a change that big. You can if it's small, uh, especially if it's noted. But when it's too big, we do have to prune the charts. So that's how they're going to be used. Now we're also working on this for cases. Our case test bench has been out of commission for most of the year because we're finally replacing it with a new bench, new methodology, but with hundreds upon hundreds of lines of data for tested cases, we want to archive that permanently before we move on. It's seven years of data that Patrick and I have collected on cases. In fact, back when we first started running the case reviews, I was driving the cases from my mom's house where I was running the site to his dorm room where he was in school so he could do the testing. We have data going like basically a lifespan back for both of us. Uh, so, it, you know, it's all out there, of course, but it's scattered across probably hundreds of videos at this point. And so we're going to try and do some really cool stuff with that, compile it, put on a mega charts page, and then that's kind of the send off for that case methodology as we move into the next one. And we really want to do something cool with that instead of just like, okay, bench is dead, next bench. The cooler benches are also getting updated this year. So as these get updated, the mega charts pages will remain and they'll keep the prior generation of cooler data. This might be an instance where it makes sense to paginate so we can have like 2020 to 2023, uh, which was all one bench on one page, and then you know, 2023 forward on another page. I don't know. We'll figure that part out. Uh, that's going to be purely a usability thing. So because it's, it's going to be way too much data. Otherwise, a single page layout will at some point actually just become enormously cumbersome and annoying to use. Uh, so it's either got to be broken up or whatever. We'll figure that out. Our hope is that people will bookmark these pages. There's an RSS feed and everything too if you use those. Now, we will still run into chart size limitations. So the, the power consumption was a great example of that. Um, it wasn't necessarily literally the size of the chart. It was that when I put all of them on a single chart, it became more of the problem of, cool, I can't read this. Like, I don't know where it's, I'm getting like, too much density and almost like semantic satiation where it all just kind of looks the same at some point. So we broke them up for those reasons. So just to walk you through these really quickly, they're split generationally or by year. So there's power data for Ryzen 7000 alongside Intel 13th and 14th series, Ryzen 5000 with Intel 10, 11, and 12. There's Ryzen 3000 with 8th and 9th gen, Ryzen 1000 and 2000 with Intel 7th gen, and a miscellaneous and legacy chart for everything where I didn't know what to do with it. I even tried to keep the x-axis the same on all these so you can just easily put them side by side. If there's one part in one chart, not in another, you want to cross compare them. Although I did have to expand the axis for the W3175X. The whole point though is that we're giving you as much as possible and it's just got the caveats and explainers there uh, if there's some sort of special situations. So as an example, the legacy component testing nuances of this is before we talk to any of these companies, the uh, background information we might have had from them is different. So things like bio settings might not be as controlled or whatever. That's all noted in the charts for you too. Couple notes on future improvements. So I know some of you are thinking about like JavaScript charts or charts where you can hover and it does stuff or you can click and add and remove things or the Anantech bench page or whatever. Uh, we're aware of all those ideas. Right now, the goal is to keep everything as simple and maintainable for my team as possible. And Wendell's the only person that I trust to develop the site, and he's the only person he trusts to develop the site too. So uh, we are keeping things as consistent with our current processes as possible because the philosophy is like, let's just get stuff out there first and fulfill this. You know, we, we, this was backburnered for years because I was trying to do too much with the website. Let's just do the thing to get the data out there and we'll improve from there and iterate on it. So the goal is, yes, we'll do more with this in the future and iterate on it and maybe build some kind of cool bench page or whatever. But for now, we got to start simple just so there's something available. And uh, we always go function first here anyway, just like in our reviews. So that's the plan. The, um, oh, frankly as well, I'm a little concerned about bots scraping and ripping us off, if, uh, especially with LLMs and stuff. If all the data is too easily accessible in text format, Maybe a different topic, but anyway, the biggest improvement lately in terms of future ideas was the table of contents that's rolled out. I haven't gone back and retroactively applied it to everything, but we're going to work on that. Uh, you can see it in use on a couple of articles though, and we're adding it to more. So that's been moving pretty well. So it's felt good to get the website done. Sometimes we move really slowly with the ambitions and that's because we're so quality focused. And my goal is to do it right by our definition of that and make it as good as possible 
uh, and function first. Even still, perfect is the enemy of good, which is a phrase Jeremy on my team said and I've really liked, and I'm, I'm sure he got it somewhere as well. But uh, so because of that, we've got the mega charts up now. So that's been the biggest community request we've been able to knock out. If you have more, leave them below because we are reading, uh, we're working on stuff. I mean, I get emails every now and then from you all, and thank you pointing out like small website bugs or typos or whatever. And if it's something Wendell needs to fix, I forward it to him. He knocks it out basically immediately. If it's something I need to fix, then we do that. So uh, lots of small tweaks and updates to the site to improve performance, navigation, all that stuff. But really trying to make this a permanently referential resource to provide long-term value. That's the takeaway I want everyone to have where it's like, you go hit the one page and then that at least points you in the right direction if it doesn't provide the information directly. And the main benefit there is it's all from our own controlled testing platform. So we know it's all comparable uh, as opposed to say some of the user benchmark options out there where uh, it's, it's more chaos. So yeah, that's the main advantage of publications or reviewers is you know it's all tested the same way, the same people. And so the data is a little easier to work with as opposed to checking like, uh, a Reddit user's discussion about how their cooler performs, but you're using like a slightly different motherboard, might have a different vCore, so all the numbers are going to be different. So that's kind of the point. But anyway, thanks for letting us share. Please hit us with your next requests, whether that's the website or the videos. We've got a big backlog of them, but we're knocking them out. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun this year, and I'm excited to do the next round. But you'll be hearing more from us soon about the acoustics. That's it for this one. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to support these efforts directly because there are no ads on those pages. Or you go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you want to help fund us in an ongoing way. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.